Okay, hi everybody. Good morning, good afternoon to those of you out on the East Coast. We're in Tucson, so it's a little uh, earlier in the day here for us. Good to see so many people online. So awesome, thank you all for joining me today for this webinar. We're gonna be talking about AI and specifically how you can use it in your business to generate more leads and then to convert them. So with that, I am gonna start the presentation um, as more people are coming in. And uh, let's see if we can make this work. Um, so I'm gonna go share. This is never as easy as you think it's gonna be. Okay, so just making sure those of you online, hi Chad, <laughs> salutations to you too. Just making sure that you can see the slide here um, to start the presentation. Could you just let me know in the chat if you're seeing that? Okay, thanks bud. Uh, Jessica, great, thank you. So, okay. Let's dive in then. So using AI to supercharge your leads and sales in 2024. So with this presentation, I'm going to be doing this um, in two parts. So in the first part, we're going to talk about AI for creating more content specifically, because that is one of the best ways still to generate leads for your business. So we are not going to look at answer the public because it's not working well today, but we're gonna look at ChatGPT and we're gonna look at Canva and the incredible uh, AI that's involved in that. That's gonna help you put out a lot more content than you might think was possible. In the second half, we're gonna look at conversions because ultimately that's what you're looking for, right? You're looking to get more of your leads to convert into business. We're gonna look at three things, missed call text backs, customer win back strategy, and chatbots, AI-enabled chatbots. Then at the end, I'm going to talk about some of the next steps that you can take to really start to use these in your business. So take this uh, time, we have an hour, to invest in yourself. Turn off your phones, turn off your Facebook, close the door uh, if you're driving and just listening, turn off the radio. Give yourself some time to really absorb this and think about how you can use it in your business. Most important thing here is to have an open mind. AI is one of those sort of polarizing topics. Some people love it, some people hate it, but there's a lot it can do for you. So keep an open mind, be present here in the today, and whether you love it or you hate it, AI is something you hear about, but it is not being adopted yet by other tree service companies. So if you adopt this now, if you're one of the first people jumping in, it is going to give you an incredible advantage over the competition. So we're, we're gonna make this as easy as possible for you. So stay with me until the end. I have a new AI powered tool I'm gonna be introducing to you. I think you're gonna like it. And if you don't already have a signed copy of my book at the end, if you want to leave me your name and address, we'll ship out a copy to you. So before I jump into all of this, for those of you who may not yet know me, I'm, I'm Monica, Monica Hemingway. I am the founder and owner, and I guess CEO of Tree Care Marketing Solutions. We just celebrated our 15th year in business and we specialize in the tree care industry. That's pretty much all we do. We do a few landscape companies as well, but for the rest, just tree care. I am an arborist licensed in Connecticut. I'm also an industrial psychologist. Don't worry, I can't read people's minds, but it's a great combination when it comes to online marketing. And I also literally wrote the book on tree care marketing. So that's the book I'll give you at the end if you want. Um, we have clients in the tree care industry all over the country, north to south, east 
to West. So I've had a lot of opportunity to work with a wide variety of different companies. And what that has done is, is let me and, and my team see a lot of different ways to do things, things that work, things that don't work, things that could be done differently or more efficiently. And so all of that information comes together in some of the stuff I'm gonna be sharing with you today. And one of the things that you might wanna go and do, you can do it during the webinar, you can do it after, is go visit our website at treecaremarketingsolutions.com because one of the things I'm talking about today, you'll be able to find it and test it out yourself on our website. Okay, so jumping in, who is this for this webinar, all right? So if you're responsible for bringing in leads or converting them into paid customers for a tree service company, you're in the right place. So if you wanna generate more leads or better, better quality leads, if you're interested in growing your revenue, your bottom line, if you're concerned about things that you know, are, might be slowing down over the winter, particularly if you are in Northern states, if you're the kinds of hands-on person, like you really like to have control over the outcomes and you wanna be able to say, if I put this in, I should be able to get that out. This is gonna be good for you as well. And if you're looking for a cost-effective solution that's easy to implement, that will help you do all of these things, you're also in the right place. So let me know in the chat, if you just type in a one or a yes, if that sounds like you, is this what you're looking to do? Yes, okay, got a bunch of yeses, thanks. Okay, so this, let's open with a quote here about AI. And this is from the CEO of Microsoft who says that AI is going to shape all of what we do going forward in terms of applications and experiences. So that is really getting at the two sides of it, right? The applications, that's the apps, the technology and things that we use online. Experiences are what our customers experience or what you experience when you work with another company, when you phone them, when you look at their website. AI is shaping both sides of that, which raises the question then, right? This is where people get kind of concerned. Is AI going to take over the world? So I'm kind of curious, what comes to mind when you think about using AI in your business, in your tree company? Are you nervous? Are you thinking about things like Terminator, like Skynet is gonna come and, and take us all out? Let me know in the chat, what do you think about AI? Good, bad, is it gonna take out the <laughs> bad Terminator? I know a lot of people think that. Um, anyone else have any thoughts about AI one way or another, just so I know where to focus a little bit? Taking over jobs from humans, using it correctly, time saver, and personality less, Wikipedia type responses. Okay, that, that's one we can definitely touch on later uh, today. Um, so dislike chatbots instead of talking to a person. A lot of people would agree with you there, yeah. Um, especially when you can tell it's a chatbot. So, okay, great. Then maybe for those of you who are kind of like, eh, maybe this isn't such a great thing, hopefully I can change your mind. And for those of you who are already kind of looking at this, this should be um, something to let you start implementing it correctly, right? So a few things about AI. First of all, it is neither inherently good nor bad, right? This is, this is not Terminator, it's not out to get us. It's what you do with it, right? It's how you train it, it's the instructions you give to it, and it's what you then do with the output. The other thing is it is not going to replace you. It's very unlikely, well, this is my opinion based on what I know, but it's very unlikely that it's going to replace humans entirely. There are some things that, yeah, probably it will and probably we want it to because no one wants to do those things. But when it comes to some of the more uh, creative and strategic things that as business owners or as managers within a, a company, the things that we're doing, I don't really see it doing that and certainly not in the near future. 
it's also not a technology that you need to go and develop yourself. It exists and the key is to use it and use it correctly. Um, you don't have to go out and build, rebuild the wheel, so to speak. It's also not perfect. So one of the big things we know is that AI hallucinates. It makes stuff up. So whatever it spits out or does for you, at this point, you, a human still has to check it. It's also not, and I should have put this on the side, it's not an easy button, right? It's not, you can press it and it's done. It takes a lot of work to put the right information into it so that you get out the right information. And then it still takes a person to verify it, edit it, work with it, all right? So that's why I'm saying at this point, not going to replace the person anytime soon. So for today, um, I'm gonna be focusing on two different parts of AI. First is generating leads, and that's the content part of it. And then the second is conversions, because you know leads don't turn into business just because they're a lead, right? So how do you convert them into uh, a sold customer? So with generating leads, um, let me just kind of walk you through the customer journey as it exists today, because so much of what we do is online. How do people find you online? Well, usually they find you because you've got some kind of content online. If you don't have any content out there, whether that's images or videos, whether that's um, written content, whether that's ads, without the content, there's no way to find you, right? So uh, press releases, direct mail, and things like that off-site as well, um, offline, people will find you that way, right? So content is, they used to say content is queen, is king, and I think that still applies. So you need to generate enough content to get found. Once you're found, that's when people will then click, right? They're gonna click on to your website, they're gonna click onto a landing page, they're going to click on their phone to call you, right? that's when you have a lead, right? It's only then that you have generated a lead and they can come in through web chat, they can come in through forms on your website, they can call you, they can send you text messages, Facebook Messenger. I mean, that these days are so many different ways for a person to become a lead and get in touch with you. Once they've become a lead, you then qualify them right? Are they looking for the services you offer? Are they in your service area? Are they looking for a quote? And you provide a quote and then hopefully that will turn into the sale, right? So essentially it all starts right here with content. In fact, you could say that if you control the content, you control the customer. One of the, like your output at the end, your sales, one of the toughest things we have when we talk with new clients especially is that they don't have content. They don't know how to create more. They don't know what to write about. They don't know what to put online and what not to. Uh, they don't know what topics to use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to come up with that content, how to create it quickly, how to get it online quickly, how to make it look great and get yourself found. Does that sound like something that would be interesting to you? So let, let me know if that's, uh, yeah, oh, I see a woo-hoo, okay, awesome. Um, totally, great. So let's start with ChatGPT, right? So you've all heard about ChatGPT. This is probably the most well-known um, AI out there. It's from a company called OpenAI. It's been in the news a lot lately. Again, it's not perfect, but what I'm finding is that probably it's the easiest one to use right now, and it works really, really well. So how do you use it to get ideas for what to write about? Let's say you are, I'm going to use as an example, a tree care company called Acme Tree in Minneapolis. It doesn't exist, but we're going to use that. So one of the things you can do is you can ask ChatGPT to come up with topics for you. So I asked it, what are the top 20 questions that people in Minneapolis have about tree service? And it came up with 10. 
ChatGPT gets a little lazy. You sometimes have to type in continue. <laughs> All right, so it came up with another 10. And then it came up with another 10 when I hit continue. So I now have 30 topics. Where does it get this from? It actually tells you what the sources are. I didn't include it here in this screenshot, but it will tell you where it pulled this information from. And what it's doing is it's going out and it's going to look at the search engine results pages in Google. And it's gonna say, okay, what are the FAQs that people are clicking on? There are sections in there called people also ask, what are those questions? And it's going to pull all of that information, consolidate it and put it into a list for you. These are pretty decent topics, right? Uh, just looking at uh, what, what are the signs that a tree is diseased or infested with pests, right? How do I know if a tree is at risk of falling? What's the process of removing a large tree near my house? You don't even need to think of these things. Chat GPT will come up with it for you, okay? So now you've got these. What are you gonna do with these topics? One thing you can do is write a blog post and that at this point is still best done by humans with some AI assistance. It's a lot more complicated, so I'm not gonna go into that. I would say do not just use chat GPT to write a blog article, it won't end well. But what you can do is this. So what I said to chat GPT is I own a tree service company in Minneapolis called Acme Tree Service. I'd like you to write an engaging Facebook post about how trees survive in winter without any leaves. And this is what it came up from with. And it also tells you the sources. So it was pulling this information from pretty reputable sources. If you see it coming up with junk, you can tell it only use reputable sources. Um, yes, so Jessica, yes, this is GPT-4. I should mention that. Uh, right now, OpenAI, last I heard, had kind of stopped people from signing up for GPT-4 or for the pro plan or plus plan, I think they call it now. The paid plan where you pay $20 a, worth, uh, a month is worth every penny. So as soon as you're able to, I would recommend doing that. And I actually might have a workaround that I can send you after, um, after the webinar to try and get into that, even if you don't have an account right now. So we'll, we can, I'll show you that later, okay? So it comes out with a blog post. Now, you guys are the experts, right? As an arborist or, or a tree service professional, you kind of have an idea of whether this is right or wrong. So you may wanna edit it. In fact, you probably should a little bit just to make sure. But generally speaking, there it is. It even has emojis in it, right? And it has hashtags in it. Going to write something that's appropriate for Facebook. If you wanted something for Instagram, you would tell it to write you something for Instagram. Okay. Now let's say you just you don't want just a um, a post. Let's say you also want uh, to do a little video. Maybe you want to do a short YouTube video. So you ask it. Can you turn the Facebook post above into a video script, but only provide me with the words? I don't need any information about video length or cutscenes. If you don't tell it that, it will give you the entire thing, including where to, you know, what kind of shots to take, where to stand, what kind of lighting you need, all of that. So if you want all of that, it'll tell you. But here's what it came up with, right? It's got basically what the, when you would transition between different shots and it tells you what to say. So if you are never sure what to do with video, because video is awesome, guys, you really wanna be doing these little videos, ChatGPT can tell you what to say. There's also, um, there are some apps you can use that if you wanna use your phone, it will put it like a teleprompter right on your phone. It'll put the script and you can just talk to it like this and read off the script. No one can tell you're reading it, that you're looking at the phone. There's your script. Would that make it easier for, for you to put some stuff online if you had this kind of information and stuff right there for you? Ah, oh, Chelsea, you did get in. Good. Um, so, all right. So, what else can you do with ChatGPT? Okay. 
I asked it to write me 20 tips for things homeowners can do to make sure their trees stay healthy over the winter. Right? We're, we're going into winter, people are concerned about it. So here it is, there is the list of things it came up with. Now, again, it's not perfect. You might wanna delete some of these or edit some of these, but you can see the little numbers behind it. It's telling you what source this came from. Where it doesn't have a source, yeah, maybe you wanna double check that one. So it has this list. So what do you do with a list, right? You can manually turn it into Facebook posts or you can manually you know, add it to a website or something, but that's a lot of work, right? Why would you do that? So you ask it, please take these 20 tips and put them into a table with the first column having the tip, that's that, and the second column having the explanation, that's that. So what it did was it took that list, it turned it into a very brief tip and an explanation in a table form. So now you can actually do something with that, except how do you get it out of chat GPT into say Excel or Google Sheets or anything like that? Well, you ask chat GPT, please turn that into a CSV file that I can download. And it does. It gives you the link to it and you can click on it and download it. And you have all of this information now, you have your tips and your explanations in a CSV file in two columns that you can use for all sorts of other things. It takes, what, this takes a couple of minutes for that to happen. So, okay, you've got this list. What do you do next? Can you, how are you going to use that list? Does anyone here use Canva? Does anybody use Canva for like, you know, images and social posts and things like that? Um, you can let me know in the chat. Yes. Okay, so we have a couple of yeses. I'm gonna guess that the rest of them are no's. Oh, twice. <laughs> okay, Chad was counting. Um, okay, so we've got some, some Canva usage. Now Canva, you can do this for free. There's also a paid plan, which is $10 a month or something. I can't remember, honestly, uh, I've had it for so long, but it allows you to do a lot of things really quickly. Social post templates. So one of the things that we do not do for our clients, and this is pretty much the only thing, is social posts. Because we truly believe that our clients are in the best position to do that themselves. Problem is they don't because it just seems too complicated, too much work. They don't have good photos to use. They don't know what to say. So here's your solution, okay? We're gonna create some social post templates. We're gonna do a bulk upload. Those tips that we just created, we're gonna upload them. I'm gonna show you how to create your own images. If you don't have good photos, you can create your own literally. And if you have vertical photos, so you've taken it with your phone like this, well, sometimes you need it to be horizontal instead. How do you turn a vertical into a horizontal? Because you can't just crop a little piece out of the middle and expect it to look good. So I'm gonna get out of this and go into Canva and show you how this works, okay? So th this is just a, a blank demo thing and what I'm gonna do is right here at the top, I'm gonna tell Facebook that I want it to look for a Facebook post quote template. You can say it however you want, but I want a template that's gonna let me put quotes, which are my little um, tips, and it gotta be sized for Facebook. And I'm gonna look at templates and I'm just going to see what it comes up with. Okay. And there we go, it's come up with a whole bunch of different templates and you just pick the one you like best. So keeping in mind, you've got a, you're seeing a blue screen. Thank you for letting me know. Um, hang on, if I put it here, now you can see it, right? That, this is the problem when I've got three monitors. <laughs> so. I can never tell where things are. Okay. 
All right, so let me just go back a second. Okay, so I was just on a blank screen and I typed in at the top here in this search bar, I wanted to look for a template for Facebook posts. And it's gonna create one that's the right size. Um, make sure you click on templates, otherwise it's gonna look in your projects. And it came up with a whole bunch of properly sized templates to use on Facebook. So you pick one. Uh, now the thing is you wanna keep in mind that what we've created so far, it's a sh very short tip, a couple of words, and then it's a longer explanation, right? So you wanna find a template here that's gonna work with that. So I'm gonna pick this one and say, customize it. All right, so here it is. Now you're gonna have to do a little bit of editing for this. This is not something you can just use it as is. So I'm gonna say, well, we don't need a, a second piece here, right? So I'm gonna just get rid of that piece. And if this is my tip, that's probably a little too big. So maybe I'll just make it a little smaller. Move the line up there. And then this is where the explanation is gonna be. Just gonna make it a little smaller as well. And I don't like it in italics, so there we go. And now the one last thing is the photo in the background. That's not gonna be right for winter tree care tips. So I need to find a photo of winter tree care tips that would go with that. Well, you might not have one, right? So what do you do? You go over here on the left, do elements and you search. In this case, I searched for trees in winter. The nice thing about Canva is that it has stock images that are free for use. So that's where these photos are. And if I click on see all, there's a whole bunch of, you know, nice winter photos. So I'm just gonna pick one. Um, and now you just need to resize it so that it fills in the space and you're gonna position it to the back. So it's behind everything. Now, that doesn't look good because you can't see the text, right? So here is one of my favorite things to do with photos. You're gonna click on edit photo. You're gonna go down to this FX effects, duotone, pick one. Okay, there we go. And you can, you can change the colors and you can change the intensity, but I'm just gonna go with this, okay? So this is now my template. The next thing I need to do is get the stuff out of that CSV file that I had, which looks like this. So this is the downloaded file, right? With the tip and the explanation. I need to get that into Canva. So you go to apps. And you got to scroll down a little bit. They don't make it necessarily all that obvious. What you're looking for is this thing here called bulk create. Okay. And you're going to upload a CSV file. And you want to upload the file that we just looked at. Okay. So it's got tip and explanation. Perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now you've got the file uploaded, how do you get it into this template? If you go and you click on, here is your, this is your tip. If you right click on that, this menu will come up and you wanna connect the data, you wanna connect it to the tip. And this one down here, which is your explanation, you right click, connect data, and you say, I wanna connect it to the explanation. And now the continue button shows up. So you hit continue, generate 20 designs. You gotta give it a moment to come up with them all. And there you go, you've got 20 Facebook posts, uh, image posts with a tip on it that you can post on Facebook. They're all correctly sized. You don't need to do anything to them unless you want to. So let's say you don't really care for the fact that they're all the same. Now think about this though. If you're posting something like this, you would do it maybe once a week. You certainly wouldn't do this every day of the week. The reality is that people are not gonna remember the design of something they saw a week ago, if they even saw it. So probably this is not at all an issue, but if you wanna be fancy, you can just go in and you can pick one 
say edit photo and now I'm going to just change the background color on that one and make it purple. And maybe I'm going to make this one here. If I do the edit photo, do a tone, I'm going to make it oh, green. Looks nice. So you can, you can edit any of these you want in any way you want. And then you would simply share, you would download them all. And now you can add them to whatever you're using to schedule out your Facebook posts. You can do that manually. You can schedule within Facebook. You can schedule with a tool like Social Pilot, for example. And you've got at least now one, one post a week for 20 weeks. And that took, what, all of 10 minutes to create it? So what do you think? Would that help make... Um, it quicker for you to do Facebook posts or just kind of stunned. <laughs> okay. So you've, you've, you've got that. So what else can you do in here? So I said, we're going to look at Facebook templates. Um, we're going to look at, the bulk upload, which we've just done. Now, how about creating your own images? All right, so let's say you don't have any good photos. So we'll take this photo away and that background one as well. And okay, you want to create a photo. So go back to the apps here on the left. And when you come down here, you'll see there's a whole bunch of you know, really interesting ones, including this one called Magic Media. This is from Canva. All right, so open that and you tell it what you want. So let's say I want to have, uh, um, um, I want a scene of a suburban backyard uh, in, oops, in winter with a large tree with no leaves and the branches and landscape are covered in a deep blanket of snow staying with our theme here okay so i'm going to ask it to generate that image it takes a little while and what it does is it actually will create four different images for you. All right, so it's taken what you said and it's turned that into an image. So let's say I decide, okay, I'm gonna use that one as my background for that particular post and I probably need to, you know, put a bit of a, effect on it to make sure that it's visible. Right. That's not a real photo. That's an AI generated photo. Would anybody really notice? No, it comes up with pretty good ones. It also gives you options to do different styles. So let's say I decided I wanted to do that in watercolor. I'd ask it to generate it again this time in a watercolor effect. And uh, you can do it in, in different sort of cartoon-like things as well. Pick a theme. If you're gonna create these kinds of images for your social posts or for, for your website or anything else, pick a theme and stick with it so that you start to build that consistent brand that people will recognize. So here we go. There, I could, I could use uh, that as my background instead. Right? Totally awesome. Now, one of the other things is, as I mentioned with photos like this, okay, so let's say you've got some great winner photos, but you want to put them on your website and they need to go that way. Okay. So I'm going to go back um, home. I'm going to create a, I'm going to tell it I need a, um, well, let's say I need a cover image for Facebook. Let's stick with Facebook. And it's going to give me a bunch of templates again, and I'm just going to pick one because these are going to be in the right size. 
So that's the, the size I need. And I'm going to look at my images. I've got some wonderful photos I want to use. Well, let's say I want to use this one. Okay. I'm not saying it's a wonderful photo, but let's say I want to use it. Well, it doesn't exactly fill the space, does it, right? That's not going to look good. And if you cropped it just down to the middle section, there's not much left. Like you'll only get a small piece of it. So what can you do? Edit the photo and click on magic, expand to the whole page and expand. Let's see what this thing does. This can be a little hit or miss, but usually if you're using it as a background image or you're, well, mostly if you're using it as a background image, it's gonna be fine. Uh, so it takes a little while. There we go. What do you think? So we've got several options here. Mm, that one looks a little weird. Oh gosh, this one's got a person in it. That doesn't look so good. Um, and that one's riding a bicycle in the tree. Okay, so AI is not always right. And you can ask it to regenerate this until you get one you want. But this one generally as a background image looks fairly good. All right, so don't let the fact that you've taken photos in this orientation stop you from using them for all sorts of things. No matter what the shape is, AI can fill it in and create that perfect shape, square, horizontal, whatever it is you need. Your chat has climbed trees with bikes in them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you wonder how they got up there. So, okay, so that is, more or less uh, a quick overview of how to generate content, use it quickly, and get it out there. Because it's best to just get it out there as opposed to trying to make it perfect. Perfect that's never seen is useless. So go with it. Ah, college prank. <laughs> okay. All right. So with that said, let's move on to part two making more sense. All right. So we've, we've covered chat GPT. I will um, send you after um, an email that has some prompting for chat GPT, like the examples that I walked through today, plus a whole bunch of other ones so that you can get it to generate the kinds of stuff that you're looking for. All right. We talked about how you can use chat GPT to create CSV files. It can combine tables for you as well, by the way, which is really nice. Um, I showed you how to create 20 or more social posts uh, in just a few minutes. Great, great images. Even when you don't have photos, you can make new ones. And what to do, right? With uh, photos in the wrong orientation. So now you're getting the content out there. You're starting to generate more leads, but leads don't sell themselves. You've got to talk to them. And this is where we tend to run in, in, in this industry and actually in a lot of small to mid-sized businesses, this is pretty common. Um, when people call you, realistically or not, they expect to hear from you right away. The problem is we get calls after hours or on weekends. We need to qualify each lead before we can schedule an estimate, right? Because if they're not in your service area or they're looking for, I don't know, to have a, a stump ground and you only do that if you've removed the tree, then they wouldn't be a viable lead. You get endless questions and requests all day long from every different source, spam messages coming in, especially these days from Facebook, you know, attention, your Facebook page needs, needs, uh, needs attention, you get spam form submissions. You, people are getting in touch with you through WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger and Instagram and text and you name it. And let's face it, you do have other stuff to do as well, right? So. The problem here is that with all of that stuff going on, the most recent research is showing that only 27% of leads who contact a small to mid-sized business, which usually means like under 50 million or something, that mid-size is not really small, only 27% of leads actually get contacted. They actually get followed up with. So think about that. You've put in all this effort to get those leads 
and three out of four never hear back anything. Maybe that's because they came in through Google business profile and you're not monitoring messages on that, right? Or maybe they sent a, a text message and you only get them on your phone. You don't get them on your desktop. And so you didn't know it came in, right? All sorts of reasons for that, but that's a real problem. We also know that the longer it takes you to respond to a lead, the lower the chances of them actually hiring you. So if you respond within one minute, the odds of that person becoming a customer go up by 391%. That's if you basically getting an immediate response to them. If you look at the difference between responding after five minutes versus 30 minutes, the odds of that person becoming a customer after 30 minutes is 21 times less than if you had contacted them at five minutes. So time to respond is incredibly important. In fact, basically after five minutes, if they haven't heard back from you, you've lost the lead. They've gone to somebody else. They've, they've called you know, every company that they could find and whoever responds first basically gets the job often or is more likely to. So if you've got five minutes, that's not a lot of time. But if you get that right, you will get more customers from the leads that you, you're generating. You will increase retention, the, the chances of them staying with you if they feel you're responsive, not just the first time they call you or contact you, but every time from there on in and boost their lifetime value, which is what we all want because we'd rather have repeat business than have to keep selling to generate more new leads. But given that, how do you do it? There are three AI powered sales tools that I'm gonna show you today. They're simple in one way, they're really not simple in other ways, but there is a way to make it as simple as possible. So let's take a look first at the missed call text back. So if somebody calls you, you don't pick up. You know, my, my husband had a tree service. He'd be 60 feet up a tulip tree. It's not like he's going to answer the phone. So what do you do? We are also going to look at the customer win back strategy. So this is also called database reactivation. And then we're going to look at chatbots, which I know a couple of people said they don't like chatbots. So we're going to look at how they've improved. So looking at the first thing, unanswered calls. Now we know that 27% of leads in general don't get a response, but it's not that much better with phone calls. Less than 40% of calls are answered. Eesh, that's not really good, all right? The, all of those missed calls are a ton of lost business. So the solution that many people have put in place is to send an immediate text to the person calling when the phone call has been missed. And if you, you can even try that, well, don't try it right now, but if you phoned us, Tree Care Marketing Solutions, we don't pick up and it's during business hours, you'll get an immediate text back, which is great. But what happens when that person sends a reply to you, right? You're still 60 feet up a tulip tree and they reply back and nothing happens, right? You end up, you've lost the lead. So there is an AI powered solution to this. And that is that after you send the, the initial text back, which would be something like, hi, this is Tree Care Marketing Solutions. I see that you just called, sorry, I missed it. How can I help you? Right, something like that. Um, when they reply, so here, it's AI that then picks up, starts a conversation with them going back and forth. And the person doesn't realize often that you have two choices. You can say this is you know, an AI assistant, which you probably should do. Some people don't, right? And sometimes people don't realize they're talking to an AI. I know on, on the webinar today, we have uh, somebody who did actually go through a long conversation 
with the AI on our website while we were still training it. And he, he didn't really realize and that it wasn't quite um, a real person. So, oh. Um, so it starts a conversation and its goal is to qualify the lead. Service you provide in your service area, they're looking for an estimate. If that's not the case, they will the AI will answer any questions it has and eventually sort of wind up the call if it or the chat. If it is a qualified lead, you have the option of having it book the appointment for you. Depends on what kind of CRM you're using and what your scheduling process is like. Some people will use a Google Calendar and they can do it. Others are going through Arbor Gold and they'd rather, or you know, something else like that, and they'd rather have it booked there, in which case you will be notified in your preferred manner uh, that you have a hot lead, call them back and get them on the calendar. So you see how that is really different from the typical text back, which really doesn't get you much further. This actually gets you to the point that you have somebody booked for a quote. So that's one way that AI is going to help you. The second way is this database reactivation or win, customer win back strategy. And this is something, especially in winter, this is a fantastic thing to do and it costs you next to nothing. Because as they say, the dollars are in the data, meaning your database, your customer list. So under this strategy, what normally happens is you go through all of your contacts that you've got, most of your customer list, people you've sent proposals to, um, your email list, maybe out of social media. There are, there are ways to get the contact information from anybody you've had any business contact with, right? You then make them an offer. You, you come up with an offer and it has to be valuable to them. It has to be timely. Usually that means seasonal, right? And it has to be relevant. You then create an attention grabbing message that's personal to them and you send that message to them with the offer through a text message and it ends up in a sale. So what's an example of this? Um, let's say it's coming into late winter, you do plant health care, um, it's getting to be time where you would want to do some maybe fungicide spraying for fruit trees. You got in your contact list, you know you've got customers who have fruit trees, maybe you've pruned them before or you've been on their property before, but they are not on your schedule to get fungicide treatments. All right, you send them an offer that it's getting time for this, that you can offer 10% off if they sign up by such and such a date, would they be interested? And you send that to them. You can also do things where, for example, uh, you send a message to people in a specific zip code. Hey, Jim, this is Trika Marketing Solutions. Our arborists are going to be in your neighborhood next week. We have, we have time on the schedule to do three free arborist inspections. Are you interested in one of those slots? Right? So you would send that message. There's nothing all that novel about that but you get to exactly the same position, right? They send you a text message back and, well, you're 60 feet up a tulip tree. What do you do? So this is where, again, we come exactly to the same position. This is where AI can help you. So when that message goes out to your database or to a segment of your database and the customer replies, the AI is going to have a conversation with it. It's going to qualify them and it's going to book them if you want it to or notify you to call them. And we do that through some pretty fancy workflows where it's a lot of think of it like if then statements. So if um, this happens, the AI will do that. So if the person replies to the message, you go down one path. If the person doesn't reply, then you try again, maybe after an hour. And if they don't reply again, maybe you just drop it, or maybe you want to try one more time, right? 
If they replied, was it positive? Yes, they're interested or no. If it's no, goes down one path and, you know, thanks, you know, maybe we'll see you later this spring. If it's yes, then, okay, now you've got your hot lead and you either have the AI work to book it or contact you, right? So you get different paths coming through this section here, depending on the behavior of the person that you've sent it to. So this is a fairly simple workflow, but it is extremely effective because you're getting people in real time. You're responding to people. Now, one of the big things that people say to us is, well, you know, there are too many ways to contact us. You have to these days be on Facebook Messenger and you have to have messages turned on on Google Business Profile. And people expect they can text you on the phone number that's on your website. And you know, how do you keep up with all of that, with all of these different lead sources? And the issue is that regardless of where they're contacting you from, people expect a response and they expect it pretty darn quick. After a while, it kind of starts to feel like a, almost like a ticking time bomb. It's, it's like my head is exploding. I can't deal with all of these different things that are coming in. So what if you had help doing that? That isn't a person that never goes to sleep, that never needs to be fed or take a bathroom break or anything like that, and responded in real time to all of these sources. So that's taking the missed call text back and the, the database reactivation and just bumping it up one more level. And this is where AI powered chatbots come in. So back to, uh, I can't remember who it was who said, yeah, they don't sound real and doesn't like talking with them. Um, John. This is a, is a somewhat different thing. So first of all, um, when we started looking into providing this for our clients to help them with this problem, we needed a platform to be able to, excuse me, build this AI out on. And I'll show you what we came up with for that. Then we had to figure out, well, how are we gonna trigger this bot to respond and train it on what to say and not say and train it how to say what we wanted it to say, because you want it to sound like you, right? You want it to have the right information, um, not give false information. If you want it to do booking for you, you've got to connect it to a calendar. And when a hot lead comes through, somebody that's been qualified by it, you need to make sure that the team gets notified so they can get in touch right away. Or if something goes wrong, which sometimes it does, they need to be notified so that they can jump in and save that conversation. Sometimes you might only want it active during specific times of the day, like uh, evenings or you know, overnight or um, on weekends if you're not open then. Right? So a lot of research, a lot of R&D went into developing this. Thankfully, we were not starting from the ground up. As I said before, there's a lot of technology out there. And so what we decided to do was we created um, tree care, the tree care lead engine, and this is built on a platform called High Level. So some of you may have heard of that. Um, it has a lot of this stuff built out, and we then customized it for the tree care industry specifically. So this is not the same model as you would get if you just went and got High Level. The other thing people get concerned about is like, well, I have a CRM. I'm using Arbor Gold or Java or Single Ops or what have you. That's great, keep using those, that's a different purpose. Think about this as more of a prospecting tool. So this is the stuff you do before they become a customer or before you give them a quote, really. It's at the point that you give them a quote that they need to go into your existing CRM. So this doesn't take the place off, it's kind of a, an add-on, right? And inside that is the robot. You need to train it. Right, like any sort of AI, one way or another, needs to be trained. 
And the nice thing within this system that we're using is that it can actually scrape your website. If you got a website that has a lot of information on it about what you are, what you do, who you are, all of that, it will scrape that information and it will turn it into a series of FAQs. So when we did it on the Tree Care Marketing Solutions website, it came up with something like 450 FAQs based on every blog post we'd written, every podcast transcript, every video transcript, all our services, uh, including some stuff that we don't necessarily have visible on the website. It scraped it all and turned it into FAQs. You can then edit those. You can add new ones. So this is basically providing the the database of information that the AI is built on. So it's tailored to your business. And it, that's one of the things that a lot of people get a little confused about. AI on itself can't do anything. It doesn't know you from someone else, right? You need to train it to respond properly. The other part of it is this, this is what's called a prompt. And this tells it how you want it to respond, what kind of tone of voice, do you want it to be friendly? Do you want it to tell jokes? Do you want it to use emojis? It, uh, you tell it what steps to go through, what information it needs to gather, what it should do if the person's qualified or not qualified, um, how to deal with bad language. You know, If you don't tell it, it might respond by swearing, right? You don't want it to do that. So you need to think through all of these different um, aspects of the response from the chatbot to make it work. So we've we've done that. We have a template for for that, so that we can build this out. We can replicate this with our clients' information, and then it goes through. You have to create the workflows. So this is the process. This is a simple, believe it or not, this is a simple version of one part of the process. So when a lead comes in at the top here, and I realize you can't see this because it's trying to fit it on one screen, it made it really small. But they can come in by Facebook, uh, GVP, Instagram, chat or SMS, email, WhatsApp, all sorts of different ways to get into the system. And then it goes through and it starts to qualify them, right? Where are they located? What zip code? We can actually look at that and see, are they in your service area? What service are they looking for? And train it that it knows the difference between tree removal and stump grinding versus just stump grinding, for example. They'll get their name, their address if you need it, their phone number, their email, it'll collect all that information and then book it or send it to you. Okay. So these need to be customized, right, based on your processes. So we've, we've built it to work for the tree care industry. So we've got most of that stuff down, but everybody's slightly different. But I wanted to sort of show you, and I realize you probably can't read it. This was on our website. Now I'll tell you the one on our website is still in training mode. So it's not 100% yet, but this is a real conversation that happened on Friday with a company. Uh, they were referred by one of our clients and they had this whole long conversation with the bot about what they wanted to talk about. It asks them uh, questions um, like, before we move forward, I'd like to ask a few qualifying questions to ensure we can provide the best service for your business. May I know the name of your business and your current marketing strategies? It asks, um, are there specific areas where you're looking to improve or expand? We didn't tell it to say that. We told it what the outcome is that is necessary, right? We need to be able to qualify these people. It knows what kind of information to ask. And then at the end, it went through this whole scheduling a phone call. It gave it to the person a couple of times, said, does this work for you? They went back and forth and eventually booked a time and scheduled it. Okay. No human intervention. It's, it's actually pretty cool. <laughs> um, so this is what the new bots can do, right? The, the AI powered bots. You also tra tra uh, train them in your own voice so they can sound like you. So it doesn't sound like you're talking to some automated thing. 
which as we know, some people prefer not to do, okay? Now, a few things. This does not replace your team calling your leads to build rapport, right? This is, this is helping them become a valid or qualified lead, but it doesn't necessarily help. It doesn't close the sale. It, that um, personal interaction still makes a difference. It doesn't replace your team confirming appointments. So it can, and it will send out confirmations. I know things like Arbor Gold can do that too. But that, again, that human interaction is always going to be a little better. It is good though for prospects who prefer to book uh, an appointment or to text you or wanna do it after hours or while your team is busy or you're up a tree somewhere, right? Um, so depending on your business, this, well, I can't think of any business that this wouldn't be good for, but it's one way to hit people or get people into your funnel, regardless of where they're coming from, when, and how they prefer to communicate with you. They expect you to communicate with them the way they want to do. So um, does this sound interesting to anybody that, that something like this, would that be helpful for your business? to uh, have something like that. Hey, I've got a couple of absolutely and a thumbs up. So, so okay. All right, Alyssa, I believe so. So the trick with this, right? It's not a trick. Um, the thing with this is that Anytime you build out something like this, it needs training, right? So right now what we're doing is we're, we, we are in beta with this for our clients and then opening it up to um, people who are not yet PCMS clients. So it goes through three phases, right? Onboarding, we need information from you. We're gonna scrape your website, but um, we need some other information like your culture and your process for getting an estimate, the services you provide, the zip codes and other information about your service area, all of that, right? Once we have all that information, we build this out for you because it's a pretty steep learning curve to uh, build these out yourself. So we do it within uh, two weeks usually, we can get that thing built out with all the workflows. If you wanna incorporate your calendar, that's in there, the chat widget on your website, it's integrated with Facebook, Instagram, and Google Business Profile. So if people try to contact you that way, it will respond that way. And we give it a personality. So ours is called Jenny, and Jenny is our lead generation bot, which is why we called it Jenny. You can call it anything you want, and make it sound female, male, what, whatever you prefer. You can customize this name totally so that it is yours, right? Even the little face that shows up on the website with it, you can put your own face if you want. You can pick um, a personality for it, right? Once it's built, you need to test it. And we walk you through what that testing process looks like, and you will find things that are like, ooh, that was a weird response. Great, that's what the testing is for. So give us the feedback. We continue to up, upgrade the information it has so that it starts to more and more resemble what it is you want it to do. And then we walk you through the launch call and go live with the thing, okay? So the from start to finish, it depends how long the testing takes, right, on, on your end. Um, we get it done in two weeks on our end. Probably want to test it for at least two weeks on your end, unless you've got a really enthusiastic team and they're all in there testing it and asking it questions and throwing things at it. Um, then maybe it takes less time, right? So why is it in beta, right? I know people wonder about that. Well, because it's not perfect. Like any of these things, this is new technology. This is kind of cutting edge. And I will say that there are very, very few companies that are currently doing this. And certainly in our industry, at this point, I don't know of any, that doesn't mean there aren't any, but doing this will put 
you so far ahead of other companies that simply aren't even close to doing this. But so it isn't perfect. We need your feedback. That's why it's in beta, not full release. But you know what's better than perfect? Getting it done, getting out there with it uh, in front of everybody else is better than perfect. Uh, perfect is the enemy of, oh, I can never remember that quote. It's something about perfection. You'll never get stuff finished. So we are putting it out now in beta to be tested, get the feedback. And in re um, return for that, you get the onboarding, the build out, the test, the launch, ongoing support. We have 24 seven chat support and we can do calls as needed. Now this thing is going to be $29.97 for an annual subscription, okay? Which is basically $250 a month, which is nothing. If you had to hire a person, right? It <laughs> certainly would cost more than that. But because it's in beta, we are offering it for TCMS clients, for our clients right now for $9.97 for a one-year subscription. For non-TCMS clients, it's still that $9.97 plus $1.99 a month because there's a lot more. Um, it's Because it's running on the tree care um, lead engine, there are costs involved with that to set up that beyond the bot itself. And we're offering 20 beta spots because we don't want to overload our team or the system or anything like that so we can give it our full attention. All right, so just know that this offer i'm doing this webinar again in january and if the 20 spots fill up before that well sorry to the people in january if they don't this will be available still in in january all right um so what is included in that and this is why for non-tcms clients there is that additional fee is the mobile and desktop app to get an app on your phone so you can use this as you can reply to text messages and phone calls from the app directly as well. All leads, regardless of source, come into the same app. So you don't have to go and look on different platforms to see and respond to different messages. Um, it gets the chat wi widget on your website. The nice thing about this one is it's doing it through SMS or text message. So if they leave the website, you still have their info, right? If they don't finish the chat. Uh, you do get the AI bot with all the different sources, calendar integration, pipeline management, like what are the stages people go through as you're qualifying them, workflow automations, that was all those maps I showed you, and then the missed call text back is also part of this, and it would be the AI-enabled version, not just the text back. So that's that's what we're putting out there right now. Uh, it's available to our accelerated clients already. Um, we're offering it now in limited release to existing clients and opening it up as a beta as well. So if you do want to get on the wait list for this or get on the beta, um, you can contact us directly or you can put your name and email in the chat here and we'll get in touch with you to get you signed up for that. Um, I'd also if you're interested in doing those AI enabled text backs and the um, reactivation, sorry, reactivation campaign, all of those AI enabled things, let us know and we'll get you signed up for the, the lead engine as well, because that will enable you to do that sort of stuff that you can't do currently. And then, Big thing, start creating your AI powered content. Now that you know how to do it, how to come up with um, ideas, how to come up with what people are looking for, turn those into social posts, turn those into all sorts of different things. Get going, start doing it because I guarantee you a lot of your, your competitors are not. And I am gonna be sending you a cheat sheet with prompts for chat GPT so that you can get the most out of it. So with that, I'm going to open it up. I know we went a little over, but if people have any questions, um, I think I can take questions.
but they'd have to be by chat. I guess I can't open it up any other way. Okay. No questions. I see a whole bunch of people interested. Is this going to be made to watch? Yes. Yeah, but it is, there will be a replay uh, of this. It will be after the second one though, the one in, in um, January, that this will be available. Uh, works with prop platforms like Jobber. You know, Chad, Jobber is one of the ones that it could possibly work with. I know Arbor Gold and Single Ops, that's a hard no. Um, Jobber's a maybe it will at least provide the information in a way that you can easily get it into your system, right? So at the moment, it's two separate systems. If your CRM has an open API, there's a possibility we can feed the information directly in, but I know some of the big ones are not. Arbostar. So Arbostar is one of the few ones, Alyssa, that is open. Uh, it does have an open API, and their guys are are really great about trying to customize. So we've already been in conversations with them about integrating our lead tracking system with them, and they'd probably be open to this too. It just depends where it fits on their roadmap, and they're like they've got a lot of stuff on it. So they they say they're looking late spring. I would probably double that estimate. But uh, yeah, they're the most configurable and uh, open to integrations. So, all right, Harold, thank you. Thank you for your thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, okay. Um, at this point that I am going to sign off, let you all get back to whatever you've got going on today and look for that uh, cheat sheet from me. If you would like a copy of my book as well, we're happy to send that to you. Just again, uh, just write book in the, oh, we need your address. We will get in touch with you to send you the book. If you just put book in the chat and um, we'll get your address from you afterwards. Okay. Chad, Alyssa. Okay. All right, we'll be sending out a whole bunch of books. So thank you all for joining me. And if you do have questions in the future, we're here, just let us know. And always happy to chat about this stuff. It's changing daily and always something new and really exciting to work with. So, thank you all and have a wonderful holiday.